It's time for a book haul. I got some book mail. Hello world, Krista here from Books and Jams and I got some book mail that I'm very excited to open up because I always forget what I ordered. So I have two boxes here. One is from Book of the Month Club and one is from Book Outlet. Guys, my Book Outlet box did not say Book Outlet on the side anywhere. Not even on the bottom. I was like, what is that big box? Oh yeah, I ordered from Book Outlet. <laughs> But let's start with the Book of the Month Club picks. Book of the Month Club, if you're not aware, is a subscription box where you get to choose which book you're gonna get. You can purchase a three month or six month or I did a year subscription with my tax return money from last year. The longer your subscription, the lower your cost. So I think I pay about $10.99 or $9.99 for hardcover books, guys, which is awesome. I love when I open this up today because it says, cue the happy dance. It says on the box here, cue the happy dance. Book mail is the best mail, don't you think? Yes, I do think. All right, so in the box, there's always a few little notes and cards and a bookmark, which I use these all the time. So how Book of the Month works, I'm sure most of you are familiar. There are five judges each month who pick books and you can then decide which book that you want and the judge of the book that you picked is the one who writes on the bookmark. This time I picked A Million Junes by Emily Henry, which I believe this is a Romeo and Juliet retelling with some paranormal or ghost aspect of it. We shall see, but I like the idea of a Romeo and Juliet retelling. I don't know that I've ever read any retellings of Romeo and Juliet. So this is the one I picked for this month. The judge's name is Katie and on the bookmark she says, stretch out someplace green and lose yourself in the luminous haunted world of A Million Junes, a deeply human love story with a magical twist. Enjoy, XO Katie. So there's the bookmark, which I'll put right in that book to use when I read it. One of the nice things about Book of the Month Club is that I have a link which I've put down in the description box below. And if anyone chooses to sign up for Book of the Month Club with that link, I receive a credit for a free book. And that happened to me last month. So thank you very much. I don't know who you are that signed up. I would love to know if you did, then let me know so I can say thank you. But I received a free book because someone signed up using my link. The extra book that I chose this month Month is The Ministry of Utmost Happiness by Arundhati Roy. She's the author of The God of Small Things, which I've heard of but not read. And this book is set in India and actually in the poor communities of India and I believe it weaves together the story of multiple characters and just talks about happiness and love in the midst of some really tough trying circumstances. So I'm really looking forward to this. I haven't heard too much about it. I know it's really new. Uh, so if you've read this or if you've heard about it, I would love to hear if this is a book that you're interested in reading or if you may have already read. So these are my two books that I chose for Book of the Month Club this month, and I'm very excited about both of them. Then we have my book outlet order. I already took out the brown paper because there's nothing worse than listening to the brown crinkly noise on a video, right? Um, I'm already a little bummed because I didn't know that this was the mass paperback edition of this book, which is part of the Outlander series by Diana Gabaldon. I have the the bigger, real floppy paperback ones, and so I probably will not be keeping this. I will unhaul it at some point, but it was super cheap at Book Outlet, less than $3, I'm sure. That's a bummer. But I haven't really read any of them yet, so I'm not too worried about it. I should have paid better attention to that. I picked up this really pretty copy of Hans Christian Andersen's Fairy Tales, retold by Naomi Lewis. I just thought this was a really pretty copy of these fairy tales. I don't own a copy of this yet, but I wanted it, so. I got this one. I picked up Brave Enough by Cheryl Strayed. This is a really nice cloth bound hardcover, hardcover. Signed first edition. What? <gasps> I didn't know this was gonna be a signed book, but there it is. There you have it. Her signature inside there. That is pretty cool. This is kind of a coffee table book. It just has um, some quotes and thoughts, I guess, from Cheryl Strayed, who is the author of Wild. Uh, which is a memoir that I have not yet read, but plan on reading. I have heard April from Getting Hugo With It talk about this book quite a bit lately, and so when I saw it on Book Outlet, I had to pick it up, and that is The Boston Girl by Anita Diamond. I don't know anything about it other than that April really loved it. I think it made it onto her favorite books of the spring list that she recently posted, so I'm very excited about this, and I live near Boston, so 
why not? I haven't read any Lucinda Riley books, but I feel like she's gonna be an author that I really like. So I picked up The Lavender Garden. Last time I ordered from Book Outlet, I grabbed The Girl on the Cliff, and now I just have another one because I'm just pretty confident. This is set in both 1998 and 1944. So Emily is the the girl who's in the current day, but she begins to learn about a family member from 1944 named Constance, who lived in France, but was sent to work as a clerk for Winston Churchill in England and ends up working with this family who is very wealthy and often entertains German soldiers and Germans in their home. And there's of course some love story that goes through there and she has to decide who she's gonna trust. And Emily in the present day is learning about more about her family and about herself through all of that. So it just sounds like a story that I'm gonna love. A family drama across time periods with some romance mixed in. It kind of sounds like a Kate Morton thing to me. So I'm really looking forward to reading The Lavender Garden. I thought this was the small puffin in bloom edition of Alice in Wonderland because this is what it looks like, only smaller and not hardcover, but this is a beautiful, regardless, it's a beautiful copy of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Let's see what it looks like underneath the cover. Ooh, that's pretty. Oh, this is pretty. I think I like it even better without the cover on it. Look at that. A little bit of shimmer in there and the back. Oh, that's a beautiful copy. So maybe I'll keep this after all. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland is a children's classic that I have not yet read, or I may have probably read when I was quite young, but don't really remember. I mean, I've seen so many movies and adaptations and retellings and such about it, but I, I think I would like to read this this year. And now I have a beautiful copy. Fun. So that was in there. And I think I paid a little bit more than I normally would on book outlet for that but whatevs <laughs> I have a problem people I have a problem the next book that I see in the box here is another gorgeous cover it's called to capture what we cannot keep by Beatrice Collin and this is a historical fiction set in the late 1800s when the Eiffel Tower in Paris is being built so it's set in France and is around uh, two characters and one of them is the designer and architect who designed the Eiffel Tower. And the other one is a girl who is not quite in the same social status as the first. So I'm really looking forward to that and that is a beautiful, beautiful cover. I picked up Isla and the Happily Ever After by Stephanie Perkins. This is the third in the companion trilogy, I guess you could say. Um, that has Anna in the French Kiss and Lola and the Boy Next Door and this one, Isla and the Happily Ever After. And I have been waiting for this to be at Book Outlet in the paperback because it's only been in there in the hardcover and the other two I have in paperback version. So I'm really excited to continue on with the trilogy. I didn't love Anna and the French Kiss, but I am looking forward to reading the other two at some point. If you've watched my channel at all over the last year, you'll know that I have not once ever talked about a book of poetry. I've read one book that had that was written in verse, which was Five to One by Holly Bodger, but I don't read poetry, really ever. And I think in part that's because when I was an English major in college, we had to dissect to death the poetry that I had to read in multiple classes. And it put this bad taste in my mouth for poetry. So now I just don't read it at all. It's intimidating to me. I never liked dissecting it. I never liked trying to interpret what the author was trying to, what the poet was trying to say. So I've avoided it like the plague. But when I saw this on Book Outlet, I couldn't resist. And this is called A Hundred Great Poems for Girls. And this is edited by Celia Johnson. And this just has a number of different poems, well, a hundred great poems in it that are categorized into nature, imagination, inspiration, fun, and nonsense. And it has some famous poets in here like Emily Dickinson and Shakespeare and Wordsworth and Tennyson, Robert Frost and Lewis Carroll and Shel Silverstein. So I'm really looking forward to picking this up and reading through some poetry and seeing if I can find some enjoyment in it that was robbed from me when I was in college. We shall see. The next one is Behind the Beautiful Forevers by Catherine Boo. And I believe that I just saw this talked about on Emily from Possibly Literate's channel. This is a memoir about the life, death, and hope in a Mumbai undercity. I feel like I just added this to Goodreads too. I totally forgot that I had ordered it. So this is a 
a nonfiction book that is written in a really easy to read way, according to Emily. On the back it says, in this brilliant breathtaking book by Pulitzer Prize winner Catherine Boo, a bewildering age of global change and inequality is made human through the dramatic story of families striving toward a better life in Anawadi, a makeshift settlement in the shadow of luxury hotels near the Mumbai airport. I know that Emily spoke very highly of this book and I'm really looking forward to reading it at some point as well. I picked up another one that I've never really heard anybody talk about and that is Amity and Sorrow by Peggy Riley. This book is about two sisters who with their mother, well their mother flees from a religious compound, a polygamous compound, uh, when they're quite young and they're super close with each other. It talks about their wrists even being tied together and they um, try to escape into Oklahoma. They end up crashing in rural Oklahoma and they're found by a farmer who has his own issues with trust and a bleak kind of future and they sort of form a bond between them. And for some reason I like reading about people escaping from extreme religious compounds or faith. The last book that I ordered from Book Outlet is Bill Bryson's A Short History of Nearly Everything. And I feel like I've heard about Bill Bryson on booktube quite a bit. He writes nonfiction in a humorous way. This one is about science. So we learn a short amount of information about the smallest particle of the universe to huge galaxies. So he kind of talks about everything in a funny and interesting way. When I saw it on there, I thought I would give it a try. Have you read Bill Bryson? Let me know. So here are all the books that I ordered from Book Outlet and received from Book of the Month Club this month. I would love to hear from you. I'm gonna set these down. Let me set them here. I would love to hear from you if you've read any of them, if any of them interest you, if you've heard of any of them. Let's chat down in the comments and I'll be talking to you soon in the next video. Bye. Holy problem. I have too many books. Ooh. <laughs>